everybody, this is Joe Van Cleve, and welcome back to The Tape Project. This might be helpful for you guys if you're interested in acquiring or starting to make a collection of micro cassette recorders and tapes. There's some things you might want to know about the quality of the tapes and the machines that'll help you, I hope, in making a good choice. So stay tuned. Well, for the most part, I would say micro cassette tapes are probably not being made anymore. I don't know for certain. It looks like they're, they're what appears to be new old stock that's being sold still out there. And I acquired a three pack of the Sony MC60 tapes recently uh, bought off Amazon. These tapes were made in Thailand, according to the packaging. I also had an older uh, of the same Sony MC60 cassette, an older one in, in stock that was made in Mexico. It's interesting. So they've been made in different countries. Not really sure if they're still being made, as I indicated, uh, brand new, but there's certainly old stock out there being sold. I have currently in my collection three micro cassette recorders now that are that work. I have my what I call my original micro 28. Radio Shack brand. And then I have these two new ones, the Olympus Pearl Quarter L200, and of course the Realistic Micro 10, which is also made by, marketed by Radio Shack. We covered kind of both of these machines in review last episode, and one of the things I did since then is, you might remember the Olympus Pearl Quarter L200 we couldn't output an audio signal out of the earphone jack last video because this particular machine uses 2.5 millimeter connectors. And so one of the things I did is I purchased some 2.5 millimeter connector adapters. And so what these have is a 90 degree 2.5 millimeter stereo connector on one end and a straight through female 3.5 millimeter connector on the other end. And so if you take both of these, you can pop them into the earphone and the microphone connector on the pearl quarter like this and that enables you to plug an external mic in and plug in your stereo headphones into this adapter right here and enables you to uh, listen to your micro cassette tapes uh, which is pretty cool and I like the 90 degree connectors and they're flexible so they don't uh, feel so bulky on this little device right here so now we have a way of getting audio in and out of both of these machines. So I started playing around with them al along with this new old stock series of Sony 60-minute micro cassettes, and I started noticing a problem, which was specifically this tape right here, which I have labeled a tape that says Bad Shell, so I'm giving away a little bit of the clue here. When I put it in the Pearl Quarter, I had a problem where... Mexico, Sony. This, the machine would play it okay, but then I noticed intermittently that the, the take-up reel wouldn't turn. And you can fast-forward it, and rewinding, though, seemed um, a little erratic. And also, if you tried to do the review mode, so that's playback, and then you're going backwards with it, it wouldn't uh, move the, the tape very well. It would like just stick and wouldn't move, and I thought, oh no, what's going on there? So, I it took me a while yesterday morning to just look at these cassette tapes in in real detail to figure out what was going on, and I figured out what the problem was in these. There's one particular tape of this three pack of Sony that if you play it and you try to go into the review mode, it won't move. It'll it'll go fast forward in the Q mode. But if you try reviewing it with the review button, sometimes it, it, it's intermittent also. It won't. Sometimes it will, and sometimes it won't. So I thought for a minute there, maybe it was this particular machine. I wasn't sure if it was the Olympus was having a problem. So I took the tape out and tried it in my Micro 28. Radio Shack model and it actually played okay and then I tried it in the realistic micro 10 and it would do it sometimes and not do it other times. Then I tried the two other tapes of this same three pack and they weren't quite as bad as this one tape right here. But this tape basically had this problem intermittently where, where like right there it won't reverse it won't review it only goes a little bit and then, and then sometimes it will so it was kind of puzzling me and I started taking a closer look at the cassette itself 
I noticed several things, and I had my made in Mexico version of the same tape to compare it against, and I noticed that several things are different. First of all, the label that's applied to the shell of the tape, um, they weren't really centered very well. If you look at the B side especially, you can see it actually, I've tried to crease it with my thumbnail here, the uh, paper label that goes up over the edge of the plastic shell and they're not really well centered. You can see it's a little crooked. And I thought, well, maybe it's the paper label is keeping the, the tape from seating itself completely in the machine itself, especially the L200 machine. I noticed on this side, the B side, there's a little plastic protrusion sticking up above the surface of the shell here. And I was thinking, well, maybe that is keeping it from seating itself in the, in the machine also. Uh, but what I really started noticing is, of course, the classic thing with the hexagonal pencil. What I noticed is the uh, there's two rollers. There's one on this corner and one on this corner that the tape comes off the reel and goes around the rollers. And I noticed that when you turn the tape by hand, the plastic rollers, these white rollers, aren't actually turning. So the tape is sort of rubbing themselves over the... They're no longer rollers, they're just uh, smooth bushings, I guess. But it, I think it's adding a little more friction. There's, there's a little bit more friction to the tape path in this particular shell. And I noticed the same thing with the other two tapes in this same pack of Made in Thailand Sony tapes. Notice this one has also white colored rollers just like the other one, but and it's not turning. The tape is sort of sliding over the roller. And the same thing with the third tape in that same pack is the tape is just sliding over the roller. Now if you compare it to this Made in Mexico tape, same model of Sony, you notice it has black plastic roller, first of all, a different material, a different color certainly, but the roller turns. See when I move the, when I turn the spool, the plastic roller is actually rotating there. So I can definitely feel a difference in tension of the tape path in this cassette. This these this tape just has a smoother feel to it. And these other three that I'm assuming were later manufacturing in Thailand are just a, a poorer quality of construction. These white rollers just don't turn very easily. And then I started comparing those with all of these legacy cassette tapes that was sent to me with these two recorders. And uh, it turns out that all of these have good cassettes. The rollers in the tape shells do turn with the tape. And so I haven't had any problems at all with these particular rollers. And the same is true with my old legacy tape collection from the 1970s. All these old tapes also of mine have good rollers and I haven't had any problems fast forward rewinding the tape. So it seems like the problems I'm having are basically isolated to this particular newer manufactured uh, Sony tapes in Thailand. So it looks like I'm onto something with regards to why I was having problems with these newer Sony tapes, but what about the problem with, I was having more problems with the Olympus L200 than in the other two units of mine. I think the difference there comes down to tolerance differences between the tape machines, essentially like the condition of the belts perhaps, and the little transport mechanism. I would say my little Radio Shack Micro 28 had the least problem, no problem at all playing any of these tapes. You could definitely hear a difference in sound level uh, fast forward and rewinding these these problem tapes in this machine. They're just louder. They sounds like they have more friction. But this machine seemed to have no problem moving the tape. Uh, so it's probably the transport is in better shape. Whereas this machine, the Micro 10, had a little bit slight problems sometimes but not as bad as the Olympus so I could attribute it to perhaps the condition of the belts and the transport is the difference there. 
So that is an interesting finding if you're going to be collecting microcassette machines and microcassette tapes as a hobby, you might want to be aware that there are differences in the way some machines will handle some tapes. So there's like a tolerance thing. Again, the Micro 28 had the least problem playing any of these tapes. I don't necessarily know if it's intrinsic to this model or it's just my particular sample is in better shape than these other two machines but anyway so just be aware that some of these tapes i would probably guess again not knowing the date on these when these were manufactured but i would guess is that some of these are in or not as well manufactured as the older tapes are and that's my gut feel about it is i, I just think the older tapes are probably better there is a difference in quality apparently just from what i've what i've been able to tell so that's kind of interesting Okay, let's talk a little bit more about adapters. Well, I mentioned already the little two and a half millimeter to three and a half millimeter adapter cables that I got that enables me to adapt the Olympus uh, outputs and inputs to standard three and a half millimeter microphone and headphone connectors. But there's also another kind of connector you're going to be interested in if you're getting into this, and there's two different kinds of connectors. Mine look differently, and that's how I'm able to tell them apart. Um, so this particular adapter ha it adapts the monaural audio of microcassette to stereo headphones. And so what this is, this has a three and a half millimeter mono male plug on one end, and then the female connector is three and a half millimeter stereo. So what this basically does is it takes the monaural audio out, out of the machine's earphone jack, which would normally play only on the left channel if you were to plug headphones right into it. And it's going to split it out into both left and right channel. So if you're listening to it on headphones, you'll hear it on both ears. Excuse me. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is this adapter here. Now this connector on the other hand it has a three and a half millimeter stereo connector on the output side. The input side is going to be three and a half millimeter monaural. So this one is how you would output audio from the earphone jack via another cable and if you want to plug it into another recording device uh, to uh, record like a digital f recorder or maybe another tape recorder that's stereo this enables you to get that monaural sound onto both tracks so one connector is uh, really for the headphones for adapting your headphones this one here uh, so you can get an output from the earphone jack into stereo left right. The other one is for outputting onto a, a male jack in stereo to record. So both of those are kind of handy connectors to get and you can get these readily available in different places especially online like in Amazon or whatever. But if you have one of these Olympus Pearl quarters that has the smaller size two and a half millimeter jacks, you really do also need these little adapters from two and a half millimeter to three and a half. Okay, so this is the uh, realistic uh, Micro 10 with the handheld Shure microphone plugged straight in to its mic jack. Chill out. Using an external microphone is, is one of the ways that you can really improve the audio quality of these little micro cassettes. For instance, I'm using my little... Um, Sure lens hopper video microphone. It's a super cardioid kind of a pickup pattern, so it's directional. It's not super directional like a real shotgun mic, but it certainly is forward directional. And uh, it has several different dB settings, output level settings. So it has a short little stretchy cable like this. And it's a little too short to sometimes use with a micro cassette recorder if you want to put the recorder in your shirt pocket or whatever. So I have one of these. Uh, three and a half millimeter female on one end and a three and a half millimeter male on the other and these are monaural so you can just plug in the uh, output here like that of the microphone and plug it into via in the case of this Olympus recorder you got to use the three and a half to two and a half adapter and you can plug it into the mic jack or if you're using one of the other micro cassette recorders that has a straight three and a half millimeter jack mic jack plug it right in like that and uh, then you have like I'm using this little cheap toy tripod as a hand holding handle for my microphone but now you have a little 
field recorder, micro cassette field recorder. You can put the recorder in your pocket, your shirt pocket. You have a ready access to the uh, the red record button right up on top of the machine right there and now you can kind of do a little bit of field recording and it's going to be surprisingly better in quality than you might think from using the standard onboard microphone on your device uh, it's it's really is pretty good here let me give it a uh, let's give it a test here let me uh, reset the tape counter here and uh, okay all right, well, this is Joe. So I'm gonna play back the results of this microphone, external mic recording from this machine. I'm gonna use this monaural three and a half millimeter cable. One end is gonna plug into the headphone jack or earphone jack of the recorder. And then I'm gonna use this mono to stereo adapter, three and a half millimeter, and I'm gonna plug it into that camera right there and I'll play back the recording for you. All right, well, this is Joe recording onto the uh, Radio Shack Micro 10 machine using my Shure Lens Hopper VP28 microphone, some adapter cables uh, sitting here in the office in the studio. Well, let's play this back and see what it sounds like, shall we? A couple of things to note if you're interested in outputting the audio from your micro cassette recorder to another device, like, for instance, recording into a stereo video camera, so you have video with the audio, is a uh, your volume of playback on the machine is going to need to be adjusted because you're not really using line level audio. This is headphone level audio. And so you have to adjust the volume level. You have to do a test recording and then play it back and see if it's overdriven or if it's not loud enough. Yeah, it'll distort if it's too loud. So you do have to adjust the headphone output level for this purpose. Uh, it's not ideal. It's not really intended to be a line level output, but seems to work okay with the right volume setting and again of course we're doing a plethora of adapters right to get from monoral left channel to stereo etc etc and our two and a half to three and a half millimeter adapters but if you don't want to spend the money and go to the trouble of acquiring one of these like Marantz field recorders that use compact cassette or the equivalent Sony item that's even more expensive and harder to get in good shape if you don't want to get one of those and if you still want to stick with cassette recording I mean there are a lot of good digital field recorders out there I have one right now actually I've had for a few years but if you want to stick with tape and do some kind of field recording especially voice work right not super high fidelity uh, get yourself an, a good little micro cassette recorder get a couple of them because they're you know small and fairly inexpensive to find used and get yourself a good little handheld directional microphone that you can put on a little mini tripod or whatever and some accessory cables as I've Described and these are kind of pretty better than you might think for voice recording, uh, recording conversations and uh, simple location sounds. If that interests you, yeah, this is really fun. Use a pair of headphones for playback, and you'll be surprised how good it sounds. Well, the last video, we did not get a chance to hear the audio recorded on the Olympus L200 with an external microphone through the earphone jack directly into the camera. So I'm going to do that now. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to use this uh, AKG D880 dynamic mic. I have a BNC to eighth inch stereo plug, and I'm going to use that to input via my little three and a half to two and a half adapter. I'm going to input this microphone into the Olympus and record some test uh, voice recording and then we'll output the signal from the Olympus via the other two and a half to three and a half adapter via this cable into the camera and uh, play it back and see how it sounds. Okay, so I'm recording my voice right now on my shotgun mic plugged into the video camera because my vocal mic is going to be hooked up to the uh, micro cassette. So we'll disconnect the BNC and we'll hook up this adapter and through the three and a half to two and a half into the microphone input of the Olympus and the tape is in there it is zeroed so let's do a test recording and then tune a point 2.4 millimeter Per second, centimeter per second. Okay. Okay, this is Joe using the AKG D. Okay. 
we'll rewind it here. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna now patch the output of this uh, pearl quarters through the earphone jack to this two and a half to three and a half adapter to this cable and the other end of this cable pop into the camera there and you'll be able to hear the playback. The microphone adapter cables directly into the Olympus L200 Pearl Quarter micro cassette recorder doing a test recording one two three three two one. Overall the sound quality is pretty decent so I like the Olympus machine because of its compact size and its good build quality uh, so it would be a nice candidate to take with you slip it in your little pocket there and if you need to carry a microphone, carry one, but otherwise you could just use this as a note-taking device, right? A little audio journal or diary. It's really a matter of concentration. If, for example, in the darkness he illuminates certain sections with a flashlight, it gives a sense of breaking the problem up and making it more approachable. When you get your micro cassette system uh, all put together with your microphones and your connectors and cables, there might be something you might want to do besides just the uh, field recordings outside, the location, ambient sounds. I love the sound of the spoken word recorded on tape. Even the low resolution uh, recordings of micro cassette, there's just something special about it. And I like to practice sometimes by reading excerpts from some of my favorite books. This is one of them. This is by David Searcy, Last Things. It's a really interesting kind of a southern gothic, if you will, novel, but uh, love rec reading my favorite passages and listening to them played back. It's a, it's a great way to enjoy the aesthetic of uh, cassette tape. Well, this is Joe Van Cleve with just reminding you guys that if you want to get into micro cassette recorders, be aware there's a difference in the various machines, how well they're able to play the tapes, and especially if you're buying new old stock tapes, there is a difference in quality between some of the tapes and other tapes, the way they're manufactured. As I indicated earlier, I was having problems with these made in Thailand Sony MC60s. And until next time, this is another episode in this ongoing saga of the tape. Hey Project, stay creative and happy recording. He waves the flashlight back and forth across the panel very quickly to get an overall view again. You'd never get that in a photograph, that sense of something touching, reaching the surface, coming nearer.